Hey guys, welcome to Tuesday morning. And last night we got reports that the White House fence was being removed in the cover of night. So I ran out to make a video. It was raining, it was cold. I got there and nothing was happening. In fact, the opposite. It looked like they were reinforcing the fence as Black Lives Matters protesters were arriving in downtown DC. So I went to look for the BLM protesters, but it was raining and they left too. So I ended up getting wet, not being able to film anything and pretty tired. So today we are going down to the U.S. Capitol. They're going to pay respects to the fallen police officer, uh, William Evans, who died just about a week ago. Then from the U.S. Capitol, we'll walk over to the White House and I'll show you what it looks like at the fence. Uh, hopefully we will see the fence go sometime this week. Anyway, but until that time, we're going to take the subway. The subway is about a mile away and I'm on the last mile of transportation, which is a scooter. And we're gonna zip down this hill until we can get on a subway train. This house right here is actually incredibly famous in Washington, D.C. It's incredibly famous worldwide. That is an I.M. Pei designed house. I.M. Pei was the architect who designed the Louvre Pyramid. He designed the Bank of China in Hong Kong, the National Gallery of Art, Modern Art in Washington, D.C. He is one of the most famous architects of the last 50 years, but he only designed three houses his own personal house in New York, a client's house in Texas, and that house back there in Washington, D.C. So one of the three I.M. Pei design personal houses in the world, right here on this little side street. So when you check, when you end the ride, you actually have to take a picture of the scooter. Okay. I wanted to show you this too, sandbags. Yeah, you guys were asking about sandbags. I showed you some on the National Mall, but this subway station too is heavily sandbagged because of flooding. And you can see that the ground is actually quite lower. They have the sandbags here. They have sandbags over there on the other side of the street too. This station is uh, well known for flooding as are several other stations, including the Smithsonian Station and the US Capitol Station. They all have sandbags as well. We're going to run down the steps because, well, we're in kind of a hurry today. And another broken escalator. In my 10 years in Hong Kong, I encountered broken escalators in the subway maybe a half a dozen times. Here in DC, every single day. It's pretty quiet back here. There are trains going to New York and down south, but there's not a lot of passengers. In normal times, this place is crazy. Filled with passengers. Trains leaving every 10 to 15 minutes up and down the East Coast into Maryland and Virginia. Now, not quite. These are commuter trains to, Mar to Baltimore. There are actually people that live in Baltimore and commute every day to Washington. <laughs> Downstairs is a food court, but it's pretty well shut down. There's not a lot of business people here eating lunch in the food court, not a lot of tourists 
getting off the buses. They even took away the tables. Restaurants are still there, but a lot of them are closed. Let's go out into the Grand Hall. Hmm. Quite a few police officers over there. Tad odd. So empty. It's not that late. It's 10:30. We still have flowers here. So the actual incident took place right over there at the uh, right over there at the North Barricade. That's now reopened, but uh, heavily guarded. This is a protest against, I believe, gun violence. And they've set out 40,000 flowers or something like that. Oh, that's uh, Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, the Congresswoman who was shot. Oh, she's right over there. So this is all about gun violence. I guess that's the number of lives lost per year. The Gun Violence Memorial remembers victims of gun violence. 40,000 flowers represents those who have died every year. So at the moment in the U.S. Capitol, they're having the memorial service. Uh, the president arrived, the vice president arrived. I missed both of the arrivals. They came in the other door kind of quietly. <laughs> it was on the uh, north side with a bunch of people who swore up and down. He was coming through this gate and all the signs were pointing to him not coming through that gate. But sometimes I miss him. Boy, they have all sorts of weird machines. What do we got here? All Pro Select Professional Grade Sand. Sand. They're adding sand to the mall. Okay. Like spikes or something. Yeah, it's drilling holes in the ground and then filling it with sand. That's what all these machines are doing. Jim, 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 jim. So, the guy's driving it. This guy's just busy driving a hole and playing like Angry Birds. He's gonna build a hole all the way down to like China or something like that. So all those machines have little drill bits and they're drilling holes and filling them in with sand. Cool. I used to go ice skating here. This used to be an ice skating rink. Now it's, well, a fountain. Back behind us is the archives. That's where the Constitution and Declaration of Independence are stored. They're in nuclear bomb proof safes, so they claim. Though I don't think they've actually used them in a long, long time. Let's, uh, I'll tell you what, let's walk through this part of the city. Let's get off the mall. I've shown you guys the mall so many times this month. Let's go back into the city and see what we can find.
You know, I have a dining room table that looks like that. I guess if I put it on its side, it could be art too. This is a prop uh, from the movie Interstellar. Uh, this was the robot. No, actually, this is art. And that looks like the OK Corral met up with Captain America and their logos clashed. See, I'm all cultured and stuff. <laughs> and that was my artistic tour. Where should we go next? Maybe we should get a bike. Should I get on a bike? Bikes are more fun. I can cover more ground. Hmm. Well, what's the range on this? 21 mile range. Ooh. It's locked. Ugh. Okay, let's get this thing into some gear. So we're on Pennsylvania Avenue in a protected bike lane. Though we're only protected by these little tiny bumpy things. There is the Archives building. And I think right over there is the original FDR Memorial. Yeah, let's go take a look at that. It's either FDR... Yeah, FDR put in his will, if you ever build a memorial of me, put it next to the Archives, make it the size of my desk, and just, that's it. So, yeah. In September 1941, Frank FDR called Justice Frankfurter to the White House and explained if there's any memorial erected to me, I want it to be like this. I want a block of stone about the size of my desk. And then some of his friends got together in 1965 and created this memorial. But about 20 years after that, people decided that he needed a grander memorial. And the gigantic FDR memorial down on the Tidal Basin was constructed against his wishes, basically. This, however, is the old post office pavilion, now the Trump International Hotel. So this is the Trump Hotel, which has a lot of very nice restaurants inside and a beautiful atrium of the old former post office. This used to be the post office general sorting facility back in the day when they built post offices to look kind of grand. Oh, we could have filmed an accident. No such luck. And it's Federal Triangle. Like some of the other subways that I've shown you, is one of the low-lying stations. There you can see this station also has a sandbag issue. Hang on. So you can see here, they've got sandbags positioned on the air vents and other access ports to the subway. And you can see these sandbags have been here for a while. They're already burned out and broken and stuff. And they've got them here. Now the Fine Arts Commission has told Metro, fix this problem. And they're like, what's the problem? They're like, it's ugly. We don't like sandbags all over the place. You need to elevate those vents. Metro's like, well, give us money to do it. And they're like, no, that's your problem. <laughs> So let's make our way over to the White House. I don't know if I can see it over there. I can kind of see it. Yeah, I can kind of see it. Mm. And you guys give me grief about running red lights and stop signs. There's a capital. That was a Secret Service cop. Wrong way. Taking up a whole lane. As if. Oh, there's like a convoy here. Okay, let's see what's going on up here. Last night there were reports that the fence was coming down. And I didn't make a lot of sense because I knew that there was a BLM protest last night. And the idea of them taking down the fence when there were protesters in town actively moving around the city, it just didn't make much sense. So I came down here and yeah, it, it wasn't coming down. Let's go up a bit. So as you can see, the fence is still up. So there are some construction signs. That's interesting. 
so the fence is still up. Uh, last night there were reports that the fence had come down. And there's actually video where the fence did look like it had come down. But when I came out here to investigate last night, what I found was all these new Jersey barriers. Not these Jersey barriers that are new. I got a cop studying New Jersey barriers. All these new cement barriers had been put into position and it looked like they had taken the fence down to reposition all of these cement barriers for further deployment. I think they want the fences to be locked in with these uh, cement barriers because right now I guess you could knock them over. So last night I went to the White House. I got these reports that the fence was being coming down. I went out to the White House. I started to film and then the rain came and it was cold and it was wet. And then two U.S. Secret Service agents, uh, uniform division, came up to this homeless guy who was kind of near me and they started questioning him and they're like, so sir, can you tell me when it was that you first realized that you in fact were the president of the United States? And then the homeless guy went into this like long soliloquy and I was just like, you know, if I keep filming here, I'm going to upset either the potential president of the United States or these two Secret Service agents. So I didn't film much. I went to look for the BLM protesters, but I couldn't even find them. So anyway, that's why I came back today. So that's what happened last night. There was a BLM protest last night, but it didn't get anywhere near here. It was uh, over in Chinatown and then went up into the Shaw neighborhood about uh, six, seven, eight blocks away from here. So, park police is back overhead, somewhere, there he is, which means uh, the president is coming back, or his motorcade is coming back. I gotta go up this big hill, so I'm gonna pay the dollar premium for an electric bike. Unlocked, and away we go. Hey. Up onto Embassy Row, in front of, uh, I think this is Luxembourg, the Turkish Defense Ministry, uh, it's at Togo. Oh, we got this. And I think the Bahamas are here, or Bermuda, Bahamas. And then the Irish, the Irish ambassador lives up to my right. He's got a really nice pad. This is the Romanians. This is the memorial for the Chilean ambassador killed by a car bomb. In this very circle, he was killed by a car bomb. Turkish ambassador's house, Latvian embassy. This is a Korean consulate. I don't think this is the embassy, technically. Up over here is the Egyptian ambassador's house. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking about these fences. Um, 
my understanding is they're going to be repaving this road which is needed and they fence in all the trees to keep the contractors away from you know throwing a bunch of junk on the roots of the trees or bashing into the trees with a backhoe or something like that not entirely sure but i think that's why they're doing it kyrgyz republic kyrgyzstan oh, i'm gonna have to cross the street up ahead Whee. this is much more peaceful than the other day when i was screaming and moaning pedaling that old bike up this hill it still takes a little bit of effort but the electricity the battery power kind of pushes the bike up the hill a little bit makes it a little bit easier you cover more distance with each pedal stroke than you would in an old-fashioned bike which will be fighting you with gravity vice president's house a couple vehicles going through the security checkpoint even the secret service police get checked ids dogs the whole thing nobody just drives on to the base some of these grounds guys working on the thing actually have sidearms <laughs> so yeah they're grounds crew but they're heavily armed grounds crew uh, pretty day hey guys it's four hours later after we filmed that this uh around lunchtime and look at this the gray skies are all gone we have uh, blue skies and the weather's getting a little bit warmer anyway i just wanted to say thanks for watching uh, feel free to subscribe like and comment i'll keep making these videos and we'll show you more of day-to-day -day life in washington and as the city reopens we'll start to show you some of the stuff that we haven't been able to show you for the last few months all right have a good day see ya